The mathematical symbol of today is the Landau symbol big O. For this notation, you either see a normal capital O or the slightly open O. In either case, you always find next to it parentheses with a function. So there's a function name, for example g, and you also often find the variable name, for example x. Now it's important to note that this big O only makes sense with respect to a limit. For example, you can write at the end that the variable x goes to the number a. Also, it's allowed that this a is the symbol infinity or the symbol minus infinity. Now, usually in this big O notation, we use an equality sign in a symbolic way. So we would write another function f of x is equal to this big O of g of x. We do this to make calculations easier to write down. However, the formal correct way would be to use an element sign here. Having said that, of course the most important part is that you know the meaning of this expression here. Indeed, it simply means that the function f on the left hand side does not grow stronger than the function g on the right hand side when x goes to the number a. Hence, usually this is helpful when you are not able to put in a into the two functions. For example, we always have this case when a is the symbol infinity. Now, of course, this explanation that f does not grow stronger than g can be put into a formula where we use absolute values. So you would say the absolute value of f of x is always less or equal than a fixed constant m times the absolute value of g of x. And indeed, this should hold for all points x in a neighborhood around a. In the case that a is infinity, this means that we have a bound such that all points x above this bound satisfy this inequality. Now, if you don't like this constant m, we can also rewrite the whole thing with a limit superior. So we have lim sup, where x goes to the point a. And then we take the absolute value of f divided by g. And now this lim sup should be a finite number, so we can write less than infinity. So you see, it means the same thing. We compare the growth rate of f with the growth rate of g. And in the case that f would grow faster, then this whole thing here would go to infinity. So maybe it's even better for the explanation when we look at an example. So let's say we have the polynomial x squared plus x plus 2. Then we can say this is in big O of x squared if x goes to infinity. However, now you know we can also say that the same polynomial is in big O of x cubed. Of course, also in the case when we look what happens when x goes to infinity. Indeed, this is what you can check now, x cubed grows faster than x squared. However, because we only have an inequality here, both things are correct. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. Now, I really hope that you learned something today and that I can see you in the next video. Bye!